Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Fleur and we're going to work one hour in a vinyasa flow. So please be mindful of your practice, do what you can, rest if you need to. Let's start. Bring yourself into a comfortable seated position. You can sit cross-legged or you can sit on your knees or any other way that feels good. Maybe you want to use a block to sit on. Get a little bit of height. And then with my friends I'm practicing, start to lengthen up through the crown of the head. And then rest your hands on your thighs or your knees. And lift your heart a little bit up towards your chin. And then just notice what that does. And then imagine the back of your neck is reaching a little bit backwards. And then your shoulders move away from your ears. And then allowing your eyes to close on your next exhale. And notice the next inhale you're taking. Notice the journey of your breath. Just breathing slowly in and out. So that you're arriving in your sacred space, the spiritual self. Where we're not just practicing the physical, we're also practicing our mindset, our mind, observing what is happening. So this practice isn't mindless, it is done with awareness. Where you notice and learn more about yourself. Every breath is a new moment. Every breath has new possibilities, space, strength, or release in it. Sometimes things might shift. They might become challenging. Or you might encounter a boundary. And you are the observer and watch and play and try out. Challenge yourself if you want to and take care of yourself if you need to. And then bringing your hands to your heart center and set your own intention for your practice. And let's take a deep breath in together through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. Let's open with the mantra on, taking a deep breath in through the nose. Ah. And then blinking your eyes open. Let's start just by bringing the arms up and forward, reaching your arms up nice and high, stretch up through the fingertips. And then start in arm circles, bring the arms down and all the way out to the side and forward. If you don't have space where you are, bring your fingertips onto your shoulders and work just into the shoulders. So shoulder rolls, also good. Notice how your shoulders are. Just a few circles in one direction. We're getting warmed up for our downward dogs. I'm doing the hand on the shoulders, although I could do this as well. <laughs> and then change direction, go the other way around, lift up, out of the side and down. And again, lift up, out of the side and down. Just a few more. And, up. and then reach the arms up, interlace the hands in front of you and push through the palms of your hands. Try to press up through the heels, not just through the knuckles. So you're going to keep the knuckles together. Draw the navel in and breathe into the sides of the ribs. Try and imagine pushing down into your hips. As if you want to reach the ceiling. And then releasing the arms out to the side. Change across of your legs. Just the unfamiliar way. And then bring the hands behind your back. Interlace the hand again behind your back, draw the hands away from the buttocks, and it feels okay, you can fold forward. Maybe the forehead rests on the floor, maybe your arms reach up then, or just stay where you are up. That's it. Try 
and relax the head. Don't bounce. Camilla, relax your neck a little. Drop your chin to That's it. Good. Turn over as well. Draw the chin to chest. Yes. Well done. And then release the arms down. Come to a tabletop position. Knees underneath your hips. Hands underneath your shoulders. And then from here, tuck your toes under. Let's work into Uddiyana Bandha. So your root block. So Uddiyana, so your Mula Bandha is your root block. Uddiyana Bandha is your second block. Right underneath the navel. Press into the hands. Draw the shoulder blades a little bit apart. And then lift your knees off the floor. And hold it here. And start your Ujjayi breath breathing. So the soft sound at the back of your throat. It sounds like the ocean waves. We're going to stay here for three more breaths. So breathing in. And as you breathe out, try to push the hands down to the floor and keep pulling belly button in. Your neck is long, so you're not lifting the chin. One more, breathe in. And then bring your knees back down. Let's warm up a little bit through our wrists. Bring the fingers out to the side and then just start to pad a little bit into the hands, side to side. Just warming up a little bit through the hands. You can peel the hands off as if you're pushing down with the fingers. That's it. And then from here, turn your fingers so that they're facing your knees and the thumbs are facing out. Tuck your toes and then draw your hips slightly back so you're stretching out the front of your wrist. If you're hypermobile, just bend your elbows a little bit so that you're not pushing into the joints. So a little bend. Max, that's for you. Bend your elbows a little bit. <laughs> Good. You're like me, you're like a bent one. Okay. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, it just means that we have to be a little careful. Okay, and then coming back, and then turn maybe the right hand over and see if you can lean into the right hand, place the left hand down, and then draw your hips back again so that you're stretching at the front of the wrist. Like this hand. You got this one or you got both? See that? Yeah. yeah, you got it. And then change over the other side. So the fingers are pointing to your knees and the thumb is inward this time. So you're stretching up the back of the hand there. Good. And then release. And then sit back. Onto your toes. So toe stretch. I really like toe stretch. No one else does. And then bring the hands together and give your hands a little rotation. Good. And change. And give a little shake. And then placing the hands onto the floor. Tuck your toes and push your hips back and up. Keep pushing the hands onto the floor. And then when you're ready, start to draw one heel and then the other down into the floor. Paddling it out. Oh, feel where your hamstrings are here. Keep active in your hands and in your knuckles. Jenna, make your down a little bit wider. So bring your feet a little bit further back. Sorry, not wider, that's the wrong one. Further back. Yes. Don't let the hands walk back as well. So walk their feet back. Walk them back towards the mat. Yes, good. That's it. Let's do a little warm up before the warm up. Bring the toes together, touching, and then lift up your right leg into the sky. Try to draw the heel down towards the floor, feeling that hamstring stretch, and then rotate your ankle in the sky. Little circles with your foot. Look down to the left foot, and then change direction in the right foot. Breathe in. Lift up the leg as high as you can. And exhale, draw the knee forward towards your nose. Round the shoulders and draw the belly button in. If this is challenging, bring your knee down. And then inhale again, lift your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, bring the right knee to the right shoulder. Inhale, bring the leg up to the sky. Work with your breath. Exhale, bring the right knee to the left shoulder. And then stretch out your right leg to the right side. To the right side of your mat, you see this? And then turn around, facing right hand onto the floor and lift the left hand up. If it's challenging, bring your right knee down. So you open up the side, keep your neck nice and long. That's it, good. 
Lovely. Jenna, bring the foot through. That's the Lantini. And then from here, bringing your right leg back up to the sky. So you come back to the center, right leg up, and then bring the foot down. Let's do this on the other side. Left leg up to the sky. Try to draw the right heel down to the floor. Exhale, left knee forward to the nose. Draw the nose, not draw the nose in, <laughs> draw the nose to the knee. Inhale, pull the leg up, point your toes. Oh, we forgot the other uh, foot circles, so we have to lift the leg up, <laughs> rotate the ankle, apologies. Foot circles. <laughs> and in other direction, foot circles with your left foot. Now we're just going to do the elbows. Breathe in again, lift that leg up. Bring your left knee to the left elbow or the armpit, as high as you can. Inhale, lift the leg back up. Exhale to the right elbow. And then stretch out your left leg to the right side. Cross it under. Under Jenna. And then lift up the, that's it. And now put it on the floor and turn to the camera. Yes, like this. You put the foot through under. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. You got it, yes. And then come back to centre. Remember, you can bring the knee down. Hand down to the floor. Lift that left leg up to the sky. And then bring the foot down. Well done. And then start to walk yourself forward towards the front of the mat. Hang forward with your head. Soften down, grab your elbows. Give yourself a little rock side to side if you like. And from here, releasing the arms. And in your own time, roll yourself slowly up. You can notice the grounding through the feet. Push down into the floor. Once you're up, roll your shoulders back. Adjust. What do you need to adjust? Bring your arms by your side to dasana. Then turn your mat sideways slightly so you have a little bit of an angle. Do what I'm doing. Okay. Let's get the water as I Breathe. Find a nice long spine. Closing your eyes again and try to notice your breathing throughout the practice now. Inhaling. Exhaling. Feel the length through the spine. Notice where your weight is in your feet. Try to make it even through the four corners of your feet. Heel, big toe, little toe. All right, breathing in, reach your arms up to the ceiling. Look up to the thumbs. Exhale, hinging forward, draw the belly button in. Nice and slow, head to your shins, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway, roll the shoulders back. Hands can come to your shins or stay on the floor. Hands down, step yourself back to high plank. And then bend your elbows, chest comes forward. Engage your core if you need to, bring your knees down. Roll onto your belly, into either low cobra. Shoulders back, chest open, or upward dog with the thighs off the mat and the core engaged, glutes engaged. Exhale, pull the hips back and push back into downward facing dog. Stay here for five breaths. One. Exhale, one. Inhaling, two. Lift your thighs to your hips. Exhale. Draw the chest through the arms, but keep pressing the hands forward and the ribs in. Four. Relax your neck a little mess. Jenna, make your downward dog longer, so step your hands forward. Good. And five. Down, press your hands down, especially your index finger knuckles. Bending your knees, that's it. Look forward, step, walk or hop to the front of your mat. Lengthen halfway, open the chest. Exhale, draw your belly button in and fold forward. Finding your hamstrings. Inhale, press into your feet. Lift your arms up to the ceiling. Let's fold down again. Uttanasana. Hips go back. Draw your head down to the floor. Inhaling halfway. Shoulders roll back. Engaging the core. Activate back muscles. Hands down. Step yourself back or hop back if that's in your practice. Bending your elbows. Turn over the toes, lift up into upper dog or low cobra. Exhaling back into downward dog through Chaturanga Dave. Well done. Stay here again for five breaths. One. Finding this calmness or noticing what's happening in this pose. Two. 
Plus la gueule. Three. Four, that's it. Wrap the shoulders away from the ears. Four. Camilla, bend your knees just a little and see if you can draw the hips further back up. That's it, but roll your shoulders away from the ears. Keep your arms strong. That's it, that's it. And five. Bending your knees, look forward. Inhale, coming to the front of the mat. Lengthen halfway, open the chest. And exhale, belly into fold. Inhale, reach your arms up, look to the sky. Last round like this, and fold down into an asana. Halfway, expanding the heart. Hands down, step or float back. Chaturanga. Keep the elbows in, open the chest. Good, Jenna, but keep the elbows in. Exhaling back to down, go. shoulders back, shoulders back, push back. Good, we're going to do three rounds where we're just going to come forward into plank. Chaturanga, up the dog, down the dog. I'll come you through. If you want to watch me for a moment, do it. What we're going to do is we're going to lift up your heels, keeping your head looking in, and you're going to roll yourself forward through the spine. When you do your chaturangas, don't let your elbows come out to the side. They have to go backwards. This is a habit. So you're not pushing your shoulders forward, they're going back. Then, if you're in your upper dog, try not to do this. You have to keep your hands under the shoulders, rolling the shoulders back and squeezing your legs together. So your arms are straight, or stay here. This is also good for your back, good guy. And let's do this three times together. Then you roll yourself back into downward dog, push with your thumb to the floor. I'll watch you, talk you through it. Here we go. Inhale, lift up the heels. Roll through the spine, nice leg, that's it. Chest forward, exhale, bend your elbows. Don't collapse the hips, good job. Open the chest, upward dog. Back into downward dog with your breath. Round two, inhale, heels come up. Slide through the spine like a wave, nice, nice. And then keep the hips engaged, elbows bent, beautiful. Open the chest, shoulders back, Jenna. Yes, back, that's it, downward facing dog. One more round in your own time. Lift the heels, round the spine, roll, 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 roll forward. Head comes forward last. Open the chest, bend your elbows, chaturanga. Good images. And lift the chest, shoulders back, open the heart. Back to downward dog, well done. Bending your knees, look forward. Step, walk or hop to the front of the mat. Come up halfway, open the chest. Exhale, fold into nasana. Inhale, reaching your arms up to the sky. Hands to heart, summer city. Bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. Nice and long through the spine, belly engaged. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Halfway up, roll the shoulders back. Hands down, step or float back. Chaturanga, Dandasana, same thing, elbows go back. Inhale, low cobra or upper dog. Chest opens, push the hands into the floor. Exhale, much better, Jenna. And then pull back down with facing dog. Lift your right leg up into the sky, three-legged dog. Point the toes. Exhale, bring your right foot forward between your hands. Stay in high lunge, breathing in, or warrior one if you prefer. Arms reach up, find the balance. Exhaling all the way down, framing your foot. Step back into high plank. If you like, three-legged chaturanga. Inhaling, open the chest. Exhale, down the dog, don't rush this. Left leg, lift up to the sky, breathe in. Exhale, bend the knee forward, come high on the back heel, step left foot in between your hands, arms reach up. Warrior one or high lunge, good then. Hands down on your exhale. Step back or lift your leg up, try chaturanga with three, one leg, <laughs> with three legs. <laughs> Open the chest, exhale, back to down the dog. Turbo dogs. Turbo dogs is where you bend your elbows back towards your toes, but don't let them touch the floor. Keep your neck relaxed and draw your head forward towards your thumbs. You might need to mini bend the knees or step a little closer. It's strong work into your arms. Don't let the elbows come out of the side. Good one for you. That's it. Then try and squeeze your elbows together if they want to touch in the middle. Press the whole hand to the floor. Down and let your knuckles come up. Press the whole hand down. So don't, that's it, good. One more breath here. 
breathing in and exhaling, straighten your arms. Let's do this one again. So two more rounds. Lift up your right leg into the sky. Exhale, bring your right foot forward between your hands. Into high lunge or warrior one. Strong in your legs. Exhale all the way down from your foot. Into your three-legged, not three-legged, <laughs> one-legged vinyasa. Open the chest. That's it. Exhale, down the dog. Where were the elbows, Jen? Lift up the left leg. Don't collapse into the lower back. Step left foot forward. Into your warrior one. Breathe in. Or oh, high lunge. Straighten the legs, Camilla. Back leg. And then all the way down. That's it. Into your chaturanga. So bend the elbows from your plank. That's it. Open the chest. Back to down. Your hands underneath your shoulders. Lift your knees. And then into your tribal of number two. Again, bend your elbows towards your toes and draw the head forward. Notice the strength you have. Stay there for three breaths. Relax your head a little, next. That's it. And try to get the crown of the head towards your thumb. So come forward with the crown of the head as you bend your elbows. Don't bring the head forward. There we go. That's it. And the last breath here. And then push the hips back again, straighten your arms. Let's do one more round. Lift your right leg up to the sky. I think everyone's warm then. <laughs> right foot forward between the hands. High lunge or warrior one. Exhale all the way down. Into three legged chaturanga or just chaturanga. Make sure you don't go too low if you're getting tired. So you just want to make sure you're in the right amount of what feels okay. Left leg lift up into three legged dog. Stretch the arms. Left foot steps forward. High lunge, breathing in. And all the way down. That's it. Find your balance. Step back into high plank first. And then bend in your elbows. Open the chest. Exhale down the dog. So I know it's sometimes difficult to do everything online. But I just know if you need a little rest here now, you can do another. Turbo dog for three breaths. Otherwise, if you're new to this, I just want to make sure that you're not doing, once you get tired, this. Watch me for a moment. So from your plank, so when you come from stepping back, please don't do this. We go into keeping the arms straight and go straight into this. All right, so you have to maybe bring your knees down and then bend your elbows and then slide yourself onto the belly if you feel your arm really tired. Because if you're going just from here to there, you're kind of collapsing into your lower back. So you need to just make sure that you're doing the right dosage and not just sort of pushing down the, the hips towards the floor. Okay, we're going to come to down the dog. And then look forward, step, hop all to the front of the mat, bend your knees, Utkatasana. Check. So I know everyone's warm, I hope, but we're going to warm you up a little bit more. Reach your arm nice and long forward, draw the belly in. Think of, sit think of sitting in a very small chair. Let's get nice, very small. That's it, a small chair. <laughs> Good, nice and small chair, even if you have long legs. There we go. And then from here, reach your arms forward nice and long through, through as if you're trying to reach forward, but the hips want to come back and breathe. And then come on to tiptoes. Try and find that balance. And nice and slowly bring the hands down towards the floor, pulling your belly button inwards. And then bring your hands towards the floor. Maybe step back a little bit with your feet. Hands on the floor. Look forward. Start to bend your elbows. Bring the back of your knees onto the back of your armpits. And draw the heart forward. Now, if you have a book, you can place your book underneath your feet. And see if you want to lift the chest a little bit more. And see if you can put pressure into the back of your hands. So into the heels of your hands, like here, right? So not in the fingertips, they will do, they're just there for your balance. If this is too much and too intense at the moment, come to something like this, like a nice squat, and bring your knees, sorry, your elbows into your knees, and try to open the chest as you press them. Good, come in and point your toes. David, point your toes. Good. That's it. Roll the shoulders back, Valentini. Yes. Good, that's it. That's Dimitri's. Put the. Oh no, you're doing crow. 
Lift the head down. Head, head, head. Yes, well done. Goodness, yes. Point your toes more. And now, that's it. Lower your shoulders a bit more, Max. Good, point your toes. Squeeze, that's it. Good. And then when you had enough, you can step yourself back. High plank, chaturanga. Let's meet everyone in downward dog. Breathe and lift your right leg up to the sky. I'm going to a little of your hips now. Bend your right knee and lift the right knee high up. Squeezing the right heel to the left glute, but don't let the left shoulder drop down. So you have to keep your arms nice and strong. Good. Lift it up. And then from here, bring your right foot forward between your hands. Lift up into a high lunge, breathing in, holding it here, and then bring the left heel down and open up into a warrior two. Now I'm in the wrong position, I'm facing my back, so I can just go, sad face. <laughs> there we go, this way, so I can see. Open up the arms, warrior two. Good. So now feel, feel the strength of your legs, turning the right knee out to the right side. Tuck your tailbone a little bit under, and imagine you're pressing into both feet as if you want to make a little rip in the middle of the mat. Look over right middle finger and breathe. Try and notice if your chest is turning to the left. Find that strength in your warrior. And then bring your right elbow down towards the right thigh. Again, lean a little bit towards the back with your shoulders and then bring your left arm down and reach it up. Looking up to the hand for your gaze focus, or if that's difficult for your neck, just look forward and try to open the chest, pressing down to your elbow. If you're feeling quite open, see if you want to slide the hand down to the inside of your right ankle, only if that's not too much. Don't let the knee come too far forward. And if you're feeling comfortable, bring your left hand behind your back and see if you can clasp your right thigh or your back of your yoga pants. Whatever they are. Yeah. And then keep your neck soft. That's it done, well done. And then from here, start to rotate the left shoulder back. Keep your legs active. Well done. If you want to bind, you can bring the arm underneath and then bind behind your back. Good. Well done. And then from here, look down to the floor. If you have a bind, you can keep the bind. Stepping your foot forward, your left foot, either one big step or on several steps. If you don't have the bind, don't worry, just step the left foot forward. I'm going to turn towards you so you can see. And then start to bend your left knee, if you've got the bind, push into the left foot. I'll do it with the bind. And see if you can find the balance to lift up the leg and then straighten it. It's called Bowler's Paradise. If you don't have the bind, just come up, take your right knee, and either turn the right knee out to the side with the hand maybe on the back, or hand on your hip, or if you can, grab hold of your right big toe, and then straighten the right leg. Maybe you can even look to the left. Oops, no, <laughs> I did that too fast. Good, if you got the bang, try and keep it. I'm just gonna hold my knee if I'm watching you. Then push down your left foot, Camilla. Straighten that leg. Imagine there's roots growing down into your foot. Well done, Jenna. that's it. And let's come down the way we came. Slowly bring the right leg back. Then step your left leg back behind you. Bring up the left arm, just a nice stretch. And then bring the left hand down inside of your right foot. Wriggle the right foot out a little bit to the side and come onto the heel of the back foot. And then lift up your right arm up, pressing into the left hand. Little gentle twist here. And then bring the right hand down to the right side, bring the left knee down towards the floor, untuck the back toes. Lift up the left arm, come up with your hips a little bit, so the left knee is under the left hip. And from here, lean over towards the right side and look down towards the right hip. Don't let the hip push out to the left side, so keep the hips level. And then lean over. So you're stretching from the left knee all the way up and over. And if it feels good, you can come a little bit forward with your hip. Good, let's go a little bit deeper into the twist, breathing in, and then bring the left elbow over your right knee. Over the side again, 
So from here, left elbow over right knee. Bring your hands together, palms touching. Bring the hands close to your chest and then lift your chest towards your hands. So you're drawing the navel in, pulling the navel in and rolling your shoulders back because the shoulder wants to come up, draw it down. If you're feeling well in your balance, tap the left toes and push back the knee, so straighten the leg. Uh, if it feels okay, you can bring the left hand down to the floor and then maybe open up through the right arm. Again, keep the knee behind your left arm. You have to hook it under. You so the, the elbow is over your knee. That's it, yes, you got it. Good, Max. And then bring your hands back down to the floor. Let's come to Pigeon. From here, bring your right knee towards the right wrist. And then draw that left knee back. Give a little wriggle. Untuck the back toes. And stay an active pigeon first of all. If this is uncomfortable, or you feel you're, you're up here or you have knee issues, make sure that you maybe support yourself with a block under the hip. Let's sit down. Good. If you're quite happy here, taking your breath in. And then just press a little down into your right shin. And then lean forward. Come onto the front. Rest your forward onto your hands and your elbows can be out to the side. We can reach the arms forward and stay here five breaths. Deep breath in, so calming down again a little. Are you still connected to the way you breathe? Three more breaths. And then let's come back out, bring your hands underneath your shoulders, tuck the left toes under. And we'll bring that left knee a little bit further forward, bring the right knee back to tabletop. Tuck the toes and push up into your downward facing dog. Walk out a little bit through the heels and let's do everything on the other side. Lift up your left leg into the sky, reach the leg high up, squeeze the left glute and then bring the left foot forward between your hands. Breathe in, warrior one or high lunge, oops. And then open up to warrior two. Make sure your knees over your ankles. Oops, you're standing too wide, not going to wobbly to death. And then make sure that your left heel is in line with the arch of your back foot. So check your alignment there, because that gives you the best stance somehow. And breathing in over the left middle finger, roll your shoulders down. Feel that the space of your heart is opening. Imagine pressing down into your feet. If you need to bring your left foot a little bit further to the middle, a bit far out from the back. Maybe I'm off. Good, and breathe in, bring your left elbow down towards the left thigh. Keep lifting the chest up and lean a little bit back. Tap tailbone, bring your right arm under and up. Look to the palm. Keep your back leg nice and straight. Reach to the arm. Yeah, make your arm nice and straight on the teeth. Reach through the fingers. Try to get your armpit to look down. So you're going to bring the armpit upwards like this. Yeah. And then if you want, bring the right hand behind your back. Maybe try to clasp your left thigh. You need to stay here rolling the shoulder back. Or if you want to bring the left hand down, see if it goes down to the floor. Or the book. Come in and make your stance a bit wider. Trust yourself. That's it. Well done. And then if you want to bind, see if you want to bring that left arm underneath you. And then draw the hips forward. Squeezing the shoulder back. This is intense. I remember doing this for the first time and go, wow. So again, remind yourself of your intention, your challenges and your boundaries. If you have the bind, or if not, doesn't matter, look forward and see if you can take some steps or one big step with your right foot to the front of the mat. And then lift good, the left heel off the floor, turn towards you, press into your right foot and feel how strong your right leg is, and then lift up your left foot. Mm. Nice and slowly, find the focus, the balance, and then see if you can straighten your leg. If you've got 
standing, just lift your left knee, right hand behind your back, hold your knee, any variations. Anything that you feel is interesting for you to play with. Bird of Paradise or Ballet Pose, or with your vine. Ooh. That's it. Keep breathing, Valentina. And slowly bend the knee again. Whoop. Slowly come back down and step yourself back to where you came from. Breathing in, lift the arms back up and over. See if you've got a little bit more space. And then bring the right hand down inside of your left foot. Lift your back heel. You can also bring the back knee down and then reach up through your left arm. Keep the shoulders drawing away from your back of the neck. So open the chest, keep pressing down to your left foot. And then look down, bring your right knee down to the floor. Right knee under your right hip, left hand or left elbow onto your thigh. Reach up through your right arm and lean over to the left. There we go. You can also draw the hips slightly forward. So you should feel quite a nice stretch all along the side. And then let's go a little bit deeper, breathe in, stretch, and then bend your left elbow over your right knee, as low as it will go, as if you want to get the armpit down to the knee. Of course, that depends how long your how the thigh bone is and how long your torso is. So I have to like, try to draw my lower ribs like, under and out to the left side, and then bring the hands to your chest, roll your left shoulder back so your neck is long, not tensing. And then you might want to tuck the toes once you have the balance and you feel stable. So press down to your left foot. And then from there, straighten the right leg. Try to think of length from the heel to the crown of the head. Push more into your right heel and squeeze your right glute. Straighten that right leg. Come over. That's it. Well done. Draw your shoulders back. Well done. And then looking down towards the floor and release down the knee, hands framing the foot and then lift up the back knee and bring your left knee towards the left wrist for your pigeon. Again, find the right position. Maybe you want to wriggle the left foot a little bit more to the right side of the mat. Draw that right knee back and then feel where is the right position. Do you feel in your left glute and IT band? Here, might need a block, or just stay where you are. Breathe, and you can then come forward, maybe into your elbows, maybe bending your elbows, bringing the forehead down. Take it slowly, I'm just taking it, just demonstrate, so I'm rushing a little bit, that's not good, so. <laughs> I just know that I'm quite open here, but as we know, sometimes we think we know, and then we suddenly don't, and it's like, ooh, that was a bit fast. So always make sure you are checking in with yourself. And just take five breaths here. Let the breath again be like waves, moving slowly and nice and wide. And then breathing in. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, push the floor away. And then tuck the right toes under, draw that right knee slightly forward. Bring the left foot back in, and then push back into a downward facing dog. And then from here, walk out a little bit through the feet. And then from here, walk yourself forward to the front of the mat. Hang forward for a moment, soften your head and roll yourself up to stand. Reach up the arms, breathe in, and bring your hands to your heart. And then bring your hands onto your hips, step or hop yourself out to the side. Boom. When you're hopping, you're actually stimulating your feet, 
So you're working into the feet muscles, that's why we're hopping. And then turn your toes slightly inwards, unless you don't like hopping, then you don't have to hop. <laughs> okay, and then from here, bring the arms either onto your stay on the hips, you can bring them out to the side, or if you want a little bit more strength for the shoulders, you can bring the arms forward, making sure that the shoulders, the arms don't fall forward. And we're going to show you sideways. So from here, reach the hips slightly back, so the weight shifts a little bit into the balls of the feet. But try to keep it even so you're not lifting the heels. And then stay here and breathe. You can have the arms, of course, out to the side if it's too much, or onto your hips. Please avoid rounding through the back so that you're tucking the tailbone under and just making a big hunch back. You want to try to lengthen from your pubic bone to the crown of the head. So you're also not looking forward with your chin. So a nice long neck. Stay here, press down to the sides of the feet, your heels, and lift up through the inner legs. Glutes are slightly engaged here. Good. Wherever your arms are, take two more deep breaths. Try and stay calm in this. Good. And then from here, just placing your left hand to the outside of your right leg. Can be your calf, can be your ankle. And then, rainbow, I want to say, <laughs> then breathe into the left rib cage. So as you pull yourself down towards the right leg, your left rib, rib cage wants to move towards the left knee. So you're expanding through the side. Feel that stretch, the hamstring stretch in the right side. Head is soft, looking to the knee. So you're not looking up. You just want to draw yourself down to that leg. That's it, everyone. Good. Take two more breaths. Ballooning the left rib cage to the left knee. And then change. Walk the right hand to the left ankle or left calf. Left hand onto your lower back so you're not sort of collapsing into one side. And then draw your right rib cage towards the right knee as you draw yourself down with your torso towards the left leg. Deep breath in and out. Feel how you can expand through each rib as you breathe. Drawing that right elbow towards the floor. And then coming back to center, bring the hands either in line with your seat if available, or maybe on your block or your book. And roll the shoulders back and then try to draw your chest through the middle. If you're quite open and your hands are in the line of your feet, you can also maybe hold the sides of your ankles or your big toes and pull yourself down with the strength of your arms. And again, slow breath. And then slowly release. Bring the hands in front of you and then turn your toes out to the side and come to a nice deep squat with your elbows into your knees, hands pressing together at your chest. That's it. If your heels come off the floor, that's absolutely fine. If you're rolling the shoulders a little bit back, try to straighten through the crown of the head. Well done. And then from here, transfer the weight into the balls of the feet and then just move your hands back. Very, like not very transitional, but <laughs> just easy to get now onto the floor. Bring your legs out in front of you, out in front of you, out of the side for a nice forward fold. If you're feeling quite um quite tight in the hamstrings, again you can sit on something like a block or a book that gives you a little bit of height and there's less of a flexion for your legs. But you can also bend your knees and then start to fold forward. Hold it here for 10 breaths. But if you're very open, then you can also bring your hands just gently behind your head, interlace the fingers, and go five circles in one direction, and then five circles in the other. You can also just hold and breathe, depending what feels more interesting. Let's change direction if you've done high circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, try to keep them quite low. Three, four, and five. Well done. And then from here, slowly rolling yourself back up. Bring the hands underneath your knees. Bring the knees together. And then holding it from here into Navasana. Lift up your legs. Balance on your sit bones. And then reaching your arms forward. Or keep holding onto the back of your knees. Well done. From here, bring your hands forward. Palms together and start to open your legs. And see if you can straighten your legs. So your hips, whoa, there, hold it here, well done, good, squeeze the legs together, point the toes, bring your hands forward, fingertips on the floor, draw the belly button in, yes, this is challenging, hold it there, tiny pulses, ah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Two, one. Everyone loves all that. No. Okay, bring the soles of the feet together. Well done. Wriggle a little bit with the hips. Turn your toes out to the side and bring your hands behind your back. Good. Press your feet together and then tuck your tailbone under and lift your hips up as if you want to scoop something underneath your buttocks. Good. And then you can do a little wriggle with your knees out to the side. Keep pressing into your feet and then slowly releasing your hips back down but try to keep squeezing your glutes together. That should give you the feeling of being a little bit more open here. So try to keep squeezing your heels together. Very carefully then come forward with your arms and then release either the head towards the toes or you can hold onto your feet and come to Bharatanasana. So Round angle, roll the shoulders back, feel the stretch in your lower back. Good. Take it in slow breath here. Two more breaths. And then slowly rolling yourself back up. Yeah. And then bringing your legs out in front of you. Stretching them out. Well done. One more pull, reaching the arms forward. And nice and slowly start to roll yourself down. Draw the navel in. Squeeze your legs together. Yeah. And then from here, take one breath in between, breathing in. And exhale, side up. We're not quite done yet. We're just going to do a little bit more grounding. So from the water, from the hips, coming now a little bit to the hamstring. So bend your right knee into your chest and then lift up the right leg. You can keep the foot pointed or if you want a little bit more, start to flex the foot and then activate your left leg. So flex the left foot, draw the belly button in and then pull yourself back towards the leg. If you want, you can just hold the leg with the right hand and bring the left hand and lengthen the fingertips towards your left knee. Hold and breathe. Keep reaching the knee away from you as you draw your nose up towards the knee. And then release, bending your knee into your chest. And then come into a little twist, drawing the knee over to the left side. And reach your right arm to the side. If that's too intense, just bend those knees to the left side. Calming the breath down now. And let's come back. Straighten up the left leg as a bend, bring the right knee back, and then slide the leg away from you. And change sides, bend your left knee, and then walk your hands up towards your calf, 
and you can stretch the leg and reach the heel away from you, draw the navel in, activate the right leg by flexing the heel away from you, reaching the heel away, and again, reaching the knee away, belly draws in. God, try to roll the shoulders away so you're focusing on your core. Good job, that's it. Right, it can be on the thigh as you try to reach with your fingers to your knee. And then release down. Bend your left knee. And then come to a twist from your left knee towards the right. The left arm reaches to the side. And again, breathe. Try to relax the body here now. Connect again to your breath if you disconnected. Observe the sensations. And let's come to closing. So bring the knee back into the center. If you can give them a hug. And then bend those knees. Bring the hands behind the knees. And we're going to come to shoulder stand. If shoulder stand is not for you, if you have neck issues, shoulder issues, or anything that feels like... Um, too high blood pressure, you can just bring your hands underneath your hips and just let your legs float for a moment up there. You can also place something underneath your hips like a book or something. That can feel nice. Otherwise, you're going to rock yourself a little bit up and down the spine, a little massage of the back, and then lift your legs over your head, bring the hands onto the lower back, and press from the hands into the back, walk the hands further up the back to straighten the legs. You can also come to a variation where you're here, so you have a little flexion in the hips. Try not to look to the side like I just did. Terrible practice today. <laughs> ah. Now I shouldn't tell myself off, telling myself off. <laughs> ah, noticing that today. Today has been a grumpy day for me, so. Ah, there we go. And then look up to the toes. Feel how you can squeeze the inner legs together, so using your adductors. Breathe slowly and carefully. And then when you're ready, nice and slowly start to lower your legs over your head. Keep the support of your hips, with your hands. If you feel that you can't go any further, just hover. Keep looking up, don't move your neck. Or you can bend your knees and bring the knees onto your forehead. Or you can bring the knees around your ears. Or you can just keep the legs straight. If your legs, if your feet touch the floor, just going along through the back of your body and reach your arms away from you. Then breathe. And then from here, bring the hands back onto the lower back, if they were off. Bend your knees into the chest. And then lift your knees a little and then turn your feet forward and bring your feet together and turn your knees out to the side. If you have a lotus or half lotus, so your legs into a lotus position, you can also go there. Go and force it. That would be another variation. If you have a Nice goddess pose squat. Toes are pointing up to the ceiling, knees out to the side. And you can balance here. Or you can try to see if one hand comes up to one knee. And then maybe the other. Take your time. Balance. Focus with your eyes. Just where your feet are. And then from here, 
to come down, bring your hands back onto the lower back, bring your knees together, straighten out the legs, and then bring the hands one by one onto the floor, and start rolling yourself out. Maybe you want to lift the head, draw the lower back onto the floor. Good, and then bend your knees, and you can lower one foot at a time down to the floor. Well done, Luke. And then stretch out the legs and give yourself a little shake. Now, if your lower back feels like it's been quite stretched out, you might want to just keep the feet on the floor for a moment and bring the knees in. And if your neck feels a little tender, just roll the head side to side. And hopefully the floor feels like it is embracing you. And then from here, once you're ready, stretch out the leg one more time. And then bring your elbows onto the floor, roll yourself up. Elbows underneath you, point the toes, and then lift the chest up, stretching the chest up towards the sky. Draw your head back if that feels comfortable, or keep looking forward, and keep lifting heart up as the shoulders squeeze together. Draw your head back, or the forward wants to look back, and the crown then comes to the floor. And then breathe. Keep drawing into your core muscles. Check you do. Lift the chest a little more, Gemma, that's it. Yes, raise your heart up. You need to squeeze the legs together. Yes, good. Dan, squeeze your legs together, point the toes. Yes. Good point, David. Well done. And then take three more breaths, and imagine that with each exhale, you release something. So you're sticking out the tongue, and exhale out. Lion's breath, dragon's breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And one more. Inhale through the nose. And exhale out through the mouth. And then draw your chin to chest and slowly lie onto your back. Bring your arms out to the side. Let your feet be as wide as the mat and just let the whole body soften now into the floor. Hopefully your shoulders and the back of the body feel now really soft and heavy and you can smoothly slide into your Shavasana, closing the eyes and resting and letting the body become soft and gentle, letting the heartbeat become slower now. weight of your arms is heavy in the floor and long from the shoulders to the fingers. Weight of your legs is heavy on the floor from the buttocks and hips to the toes and the torso from the root of your spine all the way up to the neck and the crown of the head is long and heavy on the floor. Resting, re energizing, and re centering. just a few more breaths here. Starting to slowly bring back energy in your body by breathing in. 
and exhale, sigh it out. And then slowly belly to wriggle your fingers and your toes. And then reaching your arms over your head for your next inhale. Lengthening through the toes. Come nice and long. And then bring your knees into your chest if you like, or just rolling over to one side. You can rock side to side for a moment. Depending if you want to feel, feel energized, you can roll up and down, or just roll over to one side. And then you can push the floor away. Coming up to seated. And then from here, that's my block. You're going to want to sit on a block. You can do that. And then let's see where we are here. You can turn off your place if you like. I think I've done a little bit too long one. <laughs> if you like, see if you want to tie your open leg and come to a variation where you bring your foot in, if this is available for you. Otherwise, just maybe come to the variation where you're sitting on a block and having your heels in front of each other so that the knees can move away from the hips and your legs are really nice and relaxed. That's it, and then closing your eyes, resting your hands on your thighs and your lap. Close your eyes, sit nice and tall. And start to breathe again your own breath. Balance your head over your heart and your heart over your hips. Let the features of your face be soft. And find again Ujjayi breath if you've lost it. You'll find it always again by just finding those wave-like sounds in the back of your throat. Try to let the exhales be smooth and silken. Finding those little pauses in between the inhales and the exhales. Try and stay as focused as you can with the whole length of your breath. And just like our asana practice is a meditation of movement, a moving meditation, uh, we try to become aware of what is going on. So is our seated meditation, again, a, a practice of awareness. Our breath can be our anchor or any other thing like a mantra or the focus on sensations. Because when we train our mind to focus on something that we will our mind to focus on, we learn that we're not a victim to our thoughts. We also begin to notice what our thoughts are. And our thoughts are a mixture of lists and judgments, distractions, and habitual patterns of things that we have learned that have come back to us. We get to know ourselves a little bit more. And that there is where we can change. When we learn who we are or what we thought we are. And then we become free. Everything you do, every breath, try and send love. Love to yourself, love to the awareness. Notice the sensation in a loving way, not judging, there's no right way, it's just the way that you are. And then take one more deep breath, bring your hands to your heart center, and remind yourself of your intention. Try and take that with you to your everyday life. You don't just practice asanas on the mat, but you also practice the essence outside. You practice patience, kindness, and compassion with yourself 
and with others. Let's close the space, take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. And then inhale to chant on. Thank you for joining me in this practice and for letting me guide you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Namaste. Hope you enjoyed the practice and uh, yeah, let me know any questions.